Hello and welcome to the show supported by Media Proxy. Now, articles are always very welcome at Kit Plus, and one we received recently caught our eye. It was entitled Cloud Integration, The Only Way Is Up. Yes, the author of the article was Francois Vaillant from De Giro, and we're delighted to welcome him today into the studio to discuss it. Hi, Francois. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So, Francois, for those who haven't read it yet, um, and we'll make sure we put a link in the description below, but give us a quick overview um, of the article and, um, and what you're trying to say. Well, uh, basically, what I'm trying to say that the, uh, the new format of uh, 2110 was actually, uh, um, which is, I say new, but, you know, it's been released in 2018 already. Uh, but, uh, in, you know, the 2110 was a kind of uh, a new game changers in the industry, in the broadcast industry, for many reasons. And it was actually, actually uh, facilitate the introduction of the cloud as well. So uh, we can show that the Digero can actually uh, can reach easily uh, clouds or on-premise facility, the facilities and bring the content from uh from the field to the uh to the cloud or to uh, the uh, uh to a facility and you know 2110 ip will you know ip in general i would say uh was probably enabling more the cloud and probably enabling uh uh the new uh, uh new ip facility in general yeah okay so the, there's lots of um areas within the broadcast chain that have um adopted IP workflows recently. Um, which areas have you seen the most growth in? Well, uh, uh, depend, obviously, and if the plan has actually migrated in 2110, it can be used uh, for all type of events. So it could be sport, it could be uh, a live or a record going through post. Uh, so there's no really uh, a limitation. If you're talking in the field yet, uh, well, uh, I would say still as today, there's a, uh, there, the content is mainly uh, baseband or HDSDI, should I say. So uh, the 2110, we, we're not really uh, in the field as per se. It's more to transport, uh, it's more actually uh, decode as a 2110 flavor at the station. But outside the station, I think it remains because of the size and the weight of the uh, 2110. It will remain a bit uh, that way for a while. And you've 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 recently partnered with uh, some cloud native production partners. Tell us a bit more about those. Yeah, well, you know, well, we're talking refer to that Dazzle or uh, Brazio, uh, Brazio, and uh, those two cloud providers basically. Uh, uh, contribution platform to uh, uh, cloud uh, contribution platform, so distribution platform, I should say. Mm. So our role was really to contribute to those clouds. So taking, uh, we were in a few events uh, um, in Europe where our role was really to bring uh, the content uh, uh, from the field, and typically those content was uh, in. Uh, uh, various area the the, the 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 production was kind of moving one of those was uh, actually uh, a ski event or a race event so the typically the uh, 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 the ideal is to be able to be flexible in the field and most of the time those events are uh, are may have some lack of con con connectivity so our role is really uh, to uh, uh, browsing the facility, the connectivity availabilities, and try to select and choose uh, the best connectivity uh, on various cellular providers, and to transport uh, at the best, uh, at the, the the latest latency as possible, the content from uh, that field, uh, which is a changing location many times, and which so it's mobile and flexible, and the unit is capable to really select uh, the best avail available bandwidth to transfer uh, the content. So that uh, was our role. So in that case, we were transporting that content to the cloud where uh, uh, where the client could actually publish that to various platform uh, at the same time. 
So it's uh, our role is really to be able to give the flexibility to grab it, that content and to select the proper communication link and to uh, uh, bring that content in the cloud uh, and to facilitate the, 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 the live distribution in almost real time. So Francois, I'm going to ask you to um, look into your crystal ball now. What do you think is the next step in cloud production? What do you see happening in 2022 and beyond? Well, uh, I think the, obviously the um, obviously the uh, the, uh, the pandemic gives some uh, some uh, insurance insures some uh, reinsures some uh, uh, technologists, but I think more importantly, uh, this is a maker in productions that it's uh, the the cloud the the, the cloud is kind of uh, reliable and stable and uh, safe at the same time. So um, I, I, I would expect that uh, seeing more and more uh, production being pushed in the cloud and leveraging, um, I would say, editing cloud provider um, specifically to uh, to make their production, uh, let's say, on proxies and leveraging the ADL, which is the editing uh, decision listing to push down to the raw material, uh, which has been ingested in the station, and then, uh, and then uh, do their, uh, their final uh, confirm. Uh, so I believe by pushing, I believe by pushing in, the, uh, in a uh, edit, cloud editing uh, system, um, we'll get a faster access to editors, to producers, and to, uh, to, to to select their shots, select their their story, build their stories, and it it did the, that stories as a raw on raw material in the cloud, and uh, confirm everything through the EDL uh, back to the station. Uh, so it's I think faster, uh, probably not cheaper, but obviously faster, safe, and easy to be uh, uh, shareable, shareable uh, whatever you are in the world. And it specifically, it was actually specifically tested uh, during the last two years, uh, obviously, and because people was not able to go on sets, was not able to go uh, to be present physically. Uh, so, and actually demonstrate that it's quite agile and quite fast and safe and works pretty well. So uh, I think, you know, DJRO in that space will actually be able to bring that proxy from the field or the set to that cloud uh, editing provider. And uh, is, it will be actually quite easy for us to, uh, uh, to be a, a, a big player on that specific field. A quick one on the cloud editing platforms, because we do see that as a, as a bit of the future. Does Dejiro, Dejiro and and uh, well, are you are you agnostic in that regard? Are you do you play well with everybody? Is it something you're planning to play well with everybody, or are people going to be uh, working, you know, with specific applications or specific editing providers only? Well, we will try to be as much agnostic as possible, but obviously there's always yeah. tweak to be made, uh, and we'll probably be uh, more and more agile in, the, in that specific uh, area in the next uh, in the next yeah. couple of months, years. But yeah, uh, that's the goal: to be as agnostic as possible to any kind of cloud provider and not to be attached okay, to one yeah. specifically. Yeah. Now, um, first of all, did you are I've well known, of course, for live events and, and what you do there. 2022 is going to be a big year. What particularly are you looking forward to this year? Well, uh, you know, for us, it's going to be, uh, we just launched the uh, new Engo uh, for uh, life safety, the, we, we call the Engo 263. And uh, we also launched the 265. So it's a new version of Engo, which is a Linux-based software. Uh, typically, that uh, will it's a modular approach. Will it going to be more agile for further future development uh, in the in the future? So, uh, and um, also we're expecting to to release the 4K and 5G uh, this year as well in 2022. And uh, keep good looking all the opportunity with the, our customers to uh, to be able uh, to to transport their content from the field to cloud or on-premise as they wish. 
uh, obviously. So and try to adapt our requirement, you know, because you know, 20, the, you know, cloud and twenty one ten and all the IP discussion doesn't cover all the needs that the customer has. Um, the customers Correct. still need yeah. some video return, need some intercom, need some IV control. They need a lot of th things, so which is part of the overall uh, services that we provide as a platform. So uh, that's why we need to adapt all the flavor that's requesting that request the customer to still uh, be capable to 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 prevent or to provide uh, the specificities required by broadcast. Fascinating stuff. Thank you very much for coming in, Francois, and talking to us. Um, do everybody check out the article on the kitplus.com forward slash articles page. And, of course, you can always head over to zero.com for more information on everything that they can offer. Thanks to Media Proxy for their support of Kitplus TV. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.